So when we look at servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling and singleness of your heart as unto Christ. What does this mean? Work as unto the Lord. I know a lot of people, they'll say, well, hey, I work on third shift. No one's watching me. Nobody cares. Or you may work a job and they're not paying you as much as you feel you're worth. So you may cut corners here and there and may feel as though you're doing them a favor just because, hey, at least I showed up versus someone else who may not have. Right. God wants to see if I give them a little bit of authority, a little bit of say so within their lives, what are they going to do with it? Are they going to glorify me in the sense that they're going to work as unto the Lord? Or are they going to lean to their own understanding in in a matter that is so small and, and just do what they want to do versus what they're supposed to do? You will find that you only get promoted and you get to be in leadership positions when they could trust you. And how do they know that they could trust you? Because of the entry level jobs and how you carry those out. If you want the blessings of God, don't just pray for them, work for them. It's something that we all need to learn to do. Don't be late for work. Don't do what you want to do. Don't dress how you feel like dressing. Don't neglect the rules of the workplace and then pray to God one day because you see your best friend or you see your enemy get promoted and now you want to be promoted as well. It doesn't work like that. And that's why there's so many that are falling away from the faith because, yeah, you do see people progressing and now you have this itch that you want to scratch and you want to be in that same seat of promotion where everyone admires you, but you don't have what it takes. Sorry, you may be a Christian, you may serve God, but you have to follow the rules. You have to follow the order in order to get what is needful in order to get the positions, in order to be considered blessed. Why do you think when we look at scriptures in the Bible and we look at Joseph, we look at Daniel, we look at Moses, they're put in these leadership positions, it seems like just overnight. But did you see them stumbling? Did you see them questioning? Did you see them in confusion? Did you see them asking for help from anyone? No. Why? Because they were tried with small things first and they're able to do them. And so when God's able to try you with small things, as he even says in Jeremiah, he says, if you can't run with the footmen, how can you run with the horses? So The whole idea is like, it's not so much of a trial, but how strong are you in the faith? God is not going to give us anything more than what we can handle. Can you take it? And if you can, then promotion is right there. It's right at the door. It's right for you to take. So then in 6, it says, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ. Doing the will of God from the heart, with good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men. So isn't that like one of the biggest complaints that people have? One of the biggest reasons rather as to why people, especially Christians, don't do what they're supposed to do, especially in the workplace or in their school? Is because they feel as though they're the people that they're serving or that they're working for don't deserve it. But you're lowering yourself instead of hiding yourself in the Lord. God is all about having life. He doesn't want you to be deadened. He doesn't want you to be less. He doesn't want you to be lower than what you actually are. And that's what you make yourself to be. You feel as though you're winning. It's not a choice. It's something that you're removing from yourself, right? It's something that you're resisting, right? So if you know how to do documents, you know how to do a patrol, you know how to walk or talk, but you just decide not to do those things very well because of someone in the room. Now you make them the superior, right? You make them because they're dictating your action versus you being the light 
in this world. You allowing your light so shine. You're not allowing that to be manifest. And so what are you doing? You are quenching the word of God from having its full benefit within your life. And it could be something that could actually turn that individual that you don't like around. Because they see that although you're in an atmosphere that doesn't nurture your potential, yet you rise. They see, well, wow, this person must really have something different. What is that different thing you have? Then when they see it's the word of God, then they're like, oh, wow. So I need more of God in my life. Absolutely. And you didn't have to say anything to them. All you have to do is be the person God wants you to be and don't allow anyone to change who you are. So in eight, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be free or bond. And ye, masters, do the same things unto them, for forbearing, threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven, neither is there respect of persons with him. So it's clear. Don't go to God with the excuse, God, you know my heart and you understand that this is why I'm not doing what you asked me to do. My spouse is not treating me good, so this is why I'm not doing what you want me to do. My children are not right. Um, the money is not there. My bills are um, are increasing and this is why I can't do. No, God is not going to listen to that. Those are excuses. That's why you're not hearing God's voice within your life, because he's not going to entertain foolishness. He knows what's expected of you the same way you know. That's why you're going to him with those excuses. They're mere excuses, not reasons to do something. OK, excuses are not reasons. All right. They're just void. They're vain. And you need to stop excuses and start living, start doing what God has expected and what God expects you to do. God bless.